Right now on Hoosier News Source, how safe do IU students feel on campus after the shooting at Michigan State? And how the Asian Culture Center is helping students get to campus after a hate crime on public transportation. From Bloomington, Indiana, you're watching Hoosier News Source. Hello and welcome to Hoosier News Source. I'm Shelby Brown. And I'm Ashton Ackman. The 2023 IU Student Government Executive Council candidates have been named. There are four groups currently running for the position. The first is Diversity, Advocacy, Retention, and Engagement, or DARE. Their presidential candidate is Joe Quinn Griffin with Vice President Candidate Jayanne Hammonds. Excel IU is running with presidential candidate Brink Wallach and Vice Presidential Candidate Megan Flynn. Revive for IU's presidential candidate is Lillian Rogers, and the vice presidential candidate is Aiden Chisholm. Ignite is running with Aliyah Raji as their presidential candidate and Marsha Koda as their vice presidential candidate. Voting starts on March 7th and closes at 10 p.m. on March 8th. With colleges around the country facing more threats on campus, students might be wondering what they can do to remain safe. HNS reporter Brooke Lambright talked with IUPD Chief of Police to learn about the steps students can take to ensure their safety on campus. If you see something, say something. This age old saying might be the key to ensuring campus safety for students. I would rather have our officers respond um, and kind of sort through the information rather than uh, missing an opportunity to help a student. Lees recommends a few safety tips such as downloading the Rave Guardian app, having a safety plan, and taking two-hour self-defense classes taught on campus. The Rave Guardian app allows students to call 911, receive tips from IUPD via text, and set safe walk timers. Using the app, students can also submit an anonymous report directly to IUPD. These emergency phones located around IU's campus allow students to talk directly to IUPD. After pressing the button, students have three minutes to talk to the police. Once the message is complete, press the button again to end the call. More than anything, students should dial 911, even if they are unsure whether the situation is an emergency. It's not how many cars we're pulling over every day or how many arrests we make. It's how many students we can help, how we can affect our community, and how we can do prevention, education, and community engagement to keep everyone safe. In addition to IU's many safety resources, some students would also like to see important safety material covered by professors. Encouraging more professors showing things like that or, to, or having a discussion about it, maybe during syllabus week, things like that, being like, here's safe places in the building that we are, especially for freshmen coming in. With IU's large campus, reporting any unusual activity is key. For Hoosier News Source, I'm Brooklyn Lambright. For additional safety resources, visit protect.iu.edu and in the case of an emergency, non-emergency contact IUPD at 812-855-4111. In response to the recent hate and violence against Asian and Asian American students on campus, the Asian Culture Center Safe Rides to Campus program will provide students another way to campus. The program is designed for those who live off campus and want a safer, more comfortable way to arrive to their classes and other activities on campus during the week. The Asian American Culture Center says students who live on campus should use the IU bus system for transportation due to the program's limited funding. The program will cover the price of two lift rides per day with an $8 ride discount. They can use the service between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. until March 15th when funding for the program will end. Entering the Bloomington city limits now looks a little different as the city recently installed new welcome signs. There are 11 signs around the city limits that say the city population, current mayor's name, and a unique fact about Bloomington. Mayor John Hamilton says this was a goal he wanted to accomplish since he took office. For a detailed look at where these signs are located and what are displayed on each, you can find this story right now online at iustv.com. Now for the latest on this week's weather, Quentin Condra is here to tell us what to expect. Quentin? Thanks, Shelby. Today we'll see showers and thunderstorms throughout the day, but our temperatures hitting the high 70s and the lows staying in the low 60s. We'll also see that wind pick up as we get into our afternoon slash evening hours with the wind gusts 15 to 30 miles per hour. So maybe try to wear that raincoat instead of bringing out that umbrella unless you feel like chasing it around campus. We'll see those rain chances try to sneak back into our forecast on Saturday morning before IU takes on Purdue and West Lafayette at 7.30 p.m. 
For us here in Bloomington, we'll see a 30% chance at before noon, but with those cold lows from the day before, try to be cautious with that moisture on the road to the game if you're heading up there early. We'll see those temperatures for both here and at Mackey Arena around the mid 40s to the low 30s. As for the outlook, everyone knows the saying, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, it'll change. Because tomorrow our highs are staying in the high 60s with sunshine, but as that pressure system blows out of here, that wind will wind up our day with gusts up to 40 miles per hour, leaving us with clear skies for our evening, causing our lows to plummet back down to around the low 30s. Friday, clouds coming back, dragging our highs down to the low 40s, and our lows dropping back down into those low 30s. For our weekend, we'll see our high temperatures staying in the low 50s with lows in the mid 30s to low 40s and cloudy skies. Monday, we'll see some morning rain with our highs reaching from those low 60s, giving way to some clear skies for our Tuesday. Stay dry, stay warm, and we'll see you here next week. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Quentin. Coming up on Hoosier News Source, an animal shelter struggling to find space. We'll show you how they're managing and how you might be able to help. And we'll tell you how a group of Kelly students getting real estate experience raised millions, all when we return. Welcome back to Hoosier News Source. Grace Morocco joins us in studio with the latest on international news. Grace? Thanks, guys. On Saturday, North Korea launched two ballistic missiles into the waters off of the coast of the Korean Peninsula. This is the most recent launch in the country since 2017. The missile flew 614 miles for almost 67 minutes straight, reaching an altitude of 3,584 miles, according to the Korean Central News Agency report. Saturday's test came after the North Korean Foreign, Foreign Ministry lashed out at the United States and South Korea on Friday over their plans for upcoming military exercises. The U.S. responded to that launch by holding separate drills with South Korea and Japan on Sunday. They are also planning to hold additional drills sometime next month. At least 40 people have died and dozens are still missing after intense rainfall brought flooding and landslides to Brazil. Officials have declared a state of calamity in several coastal cities where hundreds have been displaced. Brazil's Civil Defense Agency said some of the affected areas saw more than 23 inches of rainfall in 24 hours. All of this comes in the middle of the country's carnival celebrations. More heavy rain is expected in the area, threatening to make conditions even worse for em emergency teams. Rescue efforts continue clearing roads and searching for victims. U.S. President Joe Biden made a surprise trip to Kyiv early Monday. It is his first since Russia launched its invasion on Ukraine. Biden said that his trip was to reaffirm the U.S.'s unwavering support for Kyiv. Biden spent more than five hours in the Ukrainian capital speaking with the Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. This is Biden's first visit to the war zone since he was elected. Recently, Zelensky called for allies to speed up delivery of promised weapon systems and called for the West to provide Ukraine with fighter jets, something that Biden has declined to do. And that's what's going on around the world. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Grace. Adopting a pet may not be for everyone, but what are shelters left to do when animals aren't adopted? Last week, the Bloomington Animal Shelter had more dogs than kennels. H&S reporter Madison Renbarger spoke with the shelter to hear their solution. The Bloomington Animal Shelter is getting creative as their space becomes limited with more dogs than kennels available. Robin Peffinger, shelter manager and foster coordinator, says that they find good housing solutions within the building. This includes using vet rooms, behavior assessment rooms, and even offices to house animals. They also put social media to use, being transparent about the issue at hand. The shelter has to utilize the communication tools that we have with our community and then with our solid core group of volunteers and fosters here. The shelter takes in about 225 animals each month, the average length of stay for dogs being 16 days and being 27 days for cats. The adoption fees range from $27.50 to $75 and can sometimes be waived altogether depending on the time of year. But the shelter doesn't just have cats and dogs. For the month of February, they're waiving the adoption fee for all rabbits in honor of Adopt-A-Rabbit Month. Personally, I adopted a dog um, and because she just brings so much joy into our house and we just love having her there. 
People who aren't in the position to adopt can volunteer. Um, they can share our social media posts. They can foster for us. And they can donate their money. I mean, all of those things are really helpful and beneficial for us here at the shelter. The shelter also has an Amazon wish list full of useful items to donate. If you have ever considered fostering or helping out the shelter, now is the time to do it. For Who's Your News Source, I'm Madison Renbarger. All animals seen in this video are available for adoption. The shelter is open for visitations every weekday except Wednesday from 12 to 4 and on weekends from 12 to 3. 16 Kelly School of Business students raised $4.2 million for a real estate private equity fund that would allow for future investments in properties across the country. The fund is named Sample Gates Management LLC and has allowed students to have professional experience. All of the money has been raised from alumni investments. The fundraising period ended at the end of 2022 and they are now entering the investment period. Students are looking to invest in warehouses, industrial buildings, and hospitality properties in Indiana, California, Texas, Vermont, and Virginia. There's some big news in sports this week with IU women's basketball. Audrey Hausberger now joins us with the details and for the latest on all IU athletics. Audrey? Well, the net has been cut and IU women's basketball was crowned the shared Big Ten regular season champion after defeating Purdue 83-60 to Sunday afternoon. The Hoosiers, Hoosiers shared the title with Iowa on Sunday, but with the Hawkeyes falling to Maryland last night, IU is now the sole owner of the title. This is the first regular season conference title the program has seen in 40 years. What an accomplishment. The men's team faced a tough 64-62 loss against Northwestern last Wednesday, but the Hoosiers got back on track quickly, defeating Illinois 71-68 in Assembly Hall this Saturday. It was not a pretty game by any means as IU had 14 turnovers, but it ended in dramatic fashion tied at 67 with just over a minute left. Two missed free throws from Illinois' Jalen Epps and a buzzer-beating dunk by Trace Jackson Davis secured the Hoosier win. Now, I think we've all enjoyed the warmer weather around here, which can only mean that baseball is back. The IU baseball team opened their season at home yesterday afternoon, playing Miami of Ohio. Next week, the team heads down south for a three-game stand against Texas. That does it for sports. Back to you guys. Thanks, Audrey, and thank you for watching this week's episode of Hoosier News Source. For more information on this week's stories, check out iustv.com. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at IUSTV News. I'm Ashton Hackman. And I'm Shelby Brown from Bloomington, Indiana. We'll see you next time.